Microsoft Word was designed for all types of writing. It has so many different features, modes, and settings for all the different types of writing that you might want to do, but you want to write a book. And for authors, there are some styles, settings, and features that you can change to dramatically improve your experience writing a book in Word. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up your Word doc for your manuscript so that you get the most out of Word's capabilities. And I might just show you a couple of tricks that you didn't know Word could do. I'm Zach Diamante with Kindlepreneur. Let's get into it. Oh, but before we begin, a quick note on Word. If you notice that this Word looks a little different than yours, no worries. Depending on what version you have, you may find that the location of a few steps are not quite the same. However, you can locate what version you have by going to Word and About Word, and you can see your version number right there. Then you may have to do a little Google search with your version to find the exact locations of some things discussed, but usually they're pretty close. Now when writing a book, we're really talking about two stages here, writing the manuscript and then formatting it into a book when it's ready. The process and settings that you use during this phase are very different. So I recommend that you use what I'm gonna show you in this video to get your book manuscript ready. And then when your book is all done and the editor has had their chance with it, then go to the next video where you're gonna be able to see how we format a book in Word. But for now, let's jump into setting up our Word doc for writing our manuscript. When you first open Microsoft Word, you will want to make sure that all of your settings are set to the basic default settings for an optimal writing experience. Later on, we'll cover what formatting will look like in order to make sure your book is ready for publishing. But for now, let's start with going through how to make writing the different sections of a book in Word smoother. Under our Layout tab, we have our margins set to Normal orientation set to portrait, and size at a typical US letter page size. Next, let's go over to character style and set our font to one that's easy to read. The most common font for a manuscript is Times New Roman and at font size of 12. And in fact, if you plan to submit your manuscript to agents and publishers, many of them actually require that you have them in Times New Roman and 12 point font. So you're really setting yourself up for success later as well. And now that we have those basic settings right, it's time to jump in and start writing our book. The first page is the title page. Here, you will need to include your first and last name, making sure to use your actual name and not a pen name. If you're using a pen name, we will discuss where to include that later on. On the right side of your page, you're going to include your word count by going to review and selecting word count. Once you are completely finished with your book, you can add the exact number here. The next lines are going to be your address, city, state, and zip code. Your email address is going to be the email you share with your editor or publishing company. Going to the middle of your page, you will need to center your text and in all capital letters, type out your manuscript's name. Two lines below that, type by your author name, and if you're writing under a pen name, you can add writing as pen name here. Ensuring that your cursor is located right after your name, go up to insert and select page break. Selecting that adds another page and your title page is complete. Next, we're going to add some headers and footers by going to the insert tab and selecting either a header or footer. We will be creating a header with the left side, including your last name slash title of the manuscript and on the right side, our page number. To add the page number, go to page number and select right alignment and choose whether you want to start page numbers on the first page or after your title page. To change the format of page numbers, select format and choose from a few more customizable options. If you have any trouble adding page numbers, sometimes it helps to add the page numbers before doing the left side with your last name slash title. After your title page is all done, you're also going to want to include other different types of pages like copyright page, dedication, table of contents, etc. But those really come into play more during the formatting phase, so we'll talk about those later. For now, we're going to jump into styling our chapter headings. On a new page, about a third of the way down, we're going to write out chapter 1 and go to our home tab to find our styles pane. Yours may look slightly different than this, but that's all right, because we'll mainly be focusing on using the heading one, two, and three styles, which most Word versions should have. 
Making sure we have our chapter 1 highlighted, we'll select Heading 1 and center align our text. Two lines below that, we can write out our chapter title and again highlight, selecting Heading 2 and center align our text. After that, if you would like to change up the size or font, you can. Feel free to mess around with this to your liking and just make sure to keep the formatting to Heading 1 and 2. You can also apply those new font settings to your Heading 1 so that future chapters look the same. Doing this now sets us up for a smoother formatting process later, especially if you're doing a table of contents and using a formatting software like Atticus. Another tip when writing, and something I love to use personally, is if you want to include a scene break at any point, adding three stars is the most commonly understood way. This is called an ornamental break, and using the three stars is the easiest way for formatting softwares of all kinds to recognize the break and replace it with a small image later. Okay, so now that we have some of these things laid out, let's go over a few tools that will really help during the writing process. First is the different writing views. The most common for writing a book, because it is the least distracting, is called focus view. You can toggle in and out of this mode down in the lower right corner. When you do, you'll notice that there are no more tools, bars, or panes all over the screen, and you can easily focus on just your writing. You can also switch between seeing one page or two pages side by side when writing. Some authors like to keep it on the two-page view because they get a better feel on how it could land in a physical book setting. Another great feature Word has is the navigation pane. Find this here under the View tab. As you can see, we can easily scroll through all our pages and easily click on any of the pages to go directly to it. The next part of the pane does require that you have a little bit of formatting involved, but that is exactly why we already created our chapter headings the way we did. Now we can see all our headings and subheadings and quickly navigate through them by simply clicking on the chapter we'd like to view. The review tab is awesome if you are writing by yourself or with an editor or a formatter. If you or someone else working on the manuscript makes any comments or changes, they will show up here as long as you have track changes turned on, which you can toggle on and off under the review tab. This is great for protecting your work while also letting others make suggestions and changes that you can go through when they're done. Another option to keep in mind when sending your document over to different editors is that you might want to set a password so that only they can open it and make changes. To do this, make sure you are in the Review tab and select Protect Document. Here, you can set passwords and have your document set to be comments only or read only. Although this feature isn't absolutely necessary, it is a pretty cool feature that Word has and you can use for added security. Let's go back to the navigation pane for this really cool feature called Find and Replace. This feature allows you to search for specific words or phrases and replace them all in bulk if necessary. This can be very handy if you have a character name change halfway through and need to replace it. In fact, I had to do this very thing on a recent short story that I wrote because I realized too late that one of the character names was very similar to one I had used in a book previously. Or how about this bonus tip? You can also use it to quickly search your entire manuscript for any pesky spots where you may have accidentally added two spaces instead of one. Getting rid of those is really helpful for formatting later. And finally, there is the grammar and spelling editor, which you can access here. Obviously, this will be a feature you'll use a lot during revisions and editing. So there you have it. With this setup, you should be able to get more out of Word, have a better experience writing your book in the program, and also end up with a manuscript-ready book. It is important, however, to remember that Microsoft Word was not designed specifically for writing books, but rather to encompass all different types of writing. And nowadays, there are software programs like Atticus that were specifically designed for writing books with front matter, back matter, goal settings, writing habit trackers, and more, all built in to make writing a book that much smoother. Plus, Atticus allows you to write online and offline and helps to protect and back up your files. And you can even share it directly with co-authors and editors with new feature updates. It's pretty cool. 
But with all that being said, I hope you learned some really cool tips and tricks to make your writing in Word that much better. And I look forward to helping you with formatting in the next video. Ever onward.